As baseball fans, we all love home runs, right? The cracking sound of the bat, seeing the ball sail over the fence, and the roar of the crowd as it happens. It's truly one of baseball's greatest sights. One swing of the bat can truly change everything. This season, however, we have seen the long ball more times than ever. Heading into the All-Star break, the league has hit a total of 3,691 home runs, meaning the projected number of total home runs by the end of this season is a staggering 6,668 home runs. What is the record number of home runs hit in the season, you ask? 6,105, which was set in 2017. Interestingly, the total number of home runs hit in 2018 was 5,585. Personally, I think it's more remarkable that the projected number of home runs this season is over 1,000 more than the total last season. So, what's going on? Well, accusations that the ball is changing are nothing new. There were claims that the seams in the ball had been lowered, which caused a drastic increase in blister problems with many pitchers. Johnny Cueto had never experienced problems with blisters, but he believed a tighter ball was the cause for his blisters in 2017. Recently, accusations have come out that are potentially far more damaging than some blisters. Justin Verlander had accused the MLB of juicing baseballs to favor offensive production. He had some harsh words words for the league, saying, it's a joke. Major League Baseball's turning this game into a joke. Verlander had more to say, which I'll get into later, so what can we take away from these numbers and Verlander's accusations? Is the league trying to increase offensive production to the detriment of their best pitchers? Well, let's start with some context. Why would Verlander be the one who comes out with this accusation? Let's look at some stats. At age 36, Verlander is still playing like an ace. As of July 14th, 2019, Verlander has a 10-4 record, a 2.98 ERA, and a 3.7 war. He is playing very well, but there is a major outlier in his stats. He currently leads the league with 26 home runs allowed. The most home runs that Verlander has given up in a full season is 30, which was back in 2016. While you could point out that since the 2016 season, Verlander has given up more home runs as each season passes, you have to keep in mind that it is only July. We still have multiple months of baseball left until the playoffs start, and he has already given up 26 home runs. 34.2% of the hits Verlander has given up are home runs. How can a guy that ranks 3rd in strikeouts and 4th in quality starts lead the league in home runs allowed? Well, it may just be diminishing mechanics due to Verlander's age. Digging deeper into the stats, of the balls hit against Verlander, 40.2% of the time it is considered hard contact, the highest percentage in his career by 6%. The balls hit against Verlander are also being pulled 42.2% of the time, also the highest in his major league career. These percentages illustrate that despite Verlander ranking third in strikeouts, hitters are squaring him up more than ever, resulting in more home runs. Furthermore, when you look at the rankings of home runs allowed, the majority of these pitchers are are not considered elite pitchers. The next player on this list with a sub-3 ERA is Zach Greinke, who has given up 12 home runs this season. Sorting pitching stats by ERA, we see that Verlander's home run number is a huge outlier in this group of great pitchers. Interestingly, the player with the second highest amount of home runs allowed in this group is Verlander's teammate Garrett Cole. So that is something to think about. While this stat is an anomaly for Verlander, no other elite pitcher seems to be having the problems that he is experiencing, at least at the magnitude of Verlander. So is that case closed? Well, no. This is just Verlander. This doesn't answer the underlying question. Why have home run numbers spiked so much? Verlander had more to say. They own Rawlings, and you've got Manfred up here saying it might be the way they center the pill. They own the company. If any other $40 billion company bought out a $400 million company and the product changed changed dramatically, it's not a guess as to what happened. We all know what happened. Manfred, the first time he came in, what did he say? He said we want more offense. All of a sudden he comes in, the balls are juice, it's not a coincidence. We're not idiots. Basically Verlander says that there is a correlation with Rob Manfred becoming commissioner and home run numbers skyrocketing. How true is this claim? Well, let's look at some more numbers. Rob Manfred became commissioner on January 25th, 2015. Since the peak of the steroid era around the late 90s to early 2000s, home run numbers have been steadily dropping. The lowest these numbers had reached in the new millennium were 2014, the year before Manfred became commissioner. Since the 2015 season, home run numbers have increased tremendously. In the span from 2014 to 2017, home runs increased by 45.8%.
demand. There was a little drop in 2018, but as stated previously, this season's numbers will crush the 2017 record. These numbers do signify a correlation between Manfred's arrival and increasing home run totals, but these are just numbers. How has Manfred's time as commissioner led people to correlate these record numbers with involvement by Manfred? During Manfred's time as commissioner, he has had some interesting ideas to say the least. He proposed limiting defensive shifts to increase offensive production, but players were not in favor of that. He also has favored the idea of a pitch clock so pitchers don't take so long to throw out pitches. Manfred is obsessed with pace of play and wants to shorten games as he believes that is the critical reason why baseball doesn't appeal to a younger audience like basketball and football does. However, a poll conducted in March 2018 showed that introducing rules to increase pace of play will likely have no impact on ratings as 43% of people said so in the poll. Manfred has had limited success in implementing new rules too. One of Manfred's successful rule changes deals with the amount of relievers that can be used. In 2020, a reliever will have to face three batters before they are taken out of the game. This was done to decrease mound visits to speed up games. So it can be established that Manfred favors increased offensive production and has the ideas to do so. The problem he faces is the implementation of these new rules. So what if he just bypasses the player union and implements his ideas? Which Verlander might be suggesting with his comments. Something we can't overlook is that MLB now owns Rawlings, the company that produces the most important tool for the sport, the baseball. MLB baseballs are made in the Rawlings facility in Costa Rica. However, baseballs that are made for minor leagues are made in China. Why is this important? Well, these balls are made with slightly different materials, meaning they carry differently when they are hit. This year in AAA, they decided to switch to the MLB ball rather than the standard minor league ball. Keep in mind that AAA baseball is already renowned for its hitter-friendly environment. We're only halfway through the season, and just like the major leagues, home run records are projected to be shattered by the end of the season. Season. Last season, AAA hitters hit home runs every 43 appearances. That number has dropped to once every 32 plate appearances. And looking at the rest of the minors who are still using the minor league ball, early season numbers are consistent to last season. So, we now have two different environments that display how this MLB ball is contributing to increasing home run numbers. But how can the ball be responsible? And how is Manfred responsible? Rob Arthur and Tim Dix of 538 wrote an article detailing the findings of X-rayed baseballs from different seasons. I highly recommend you check it out. Research performed by the Kent School of Medicine, which was commissioned by ESPN sports science, found that baseballs used after the 2015 All-Star Game have a somewhat less dense core than the baseball used beforehand. The newer cores weigh about half a gram less than the old ones. However, this alone is not enough to explain the ever-increasing home run totals, but this does not tell the whole story. There are many findings with the balls used after the 2015 All-Star Game. Ben Lindbergh wrote an article for The Ringer that showcases these findings. Mitchell Lichtman, the co-author of the article, bought 36 MLB game-used baseballs and sent them to the sports science lab at Washington State University. The findings showed that balls used in 2016 had lower circumferences and seam heights, and the bounciness of the balls was higher. The calculations showed that the average amount of feet added to distance after the ball is hit was about 7.1 feet. Also, the results showed a 1.43 miles an hour increase in exit speed. This may not sound like much, but early calculations showed that an increase of about 1.5 miles an hour in exit speed would lead to a dramatic change in home runs. This means that the new balls are able to be hit higher, further, and harder. Some hitters have started intentionally trying to hit the ball in the air more, which is definitely a factor in these home run numbers. But the ball itself may be benefiting hitters that are trying to hit the ball in the air more than ever before. Analysis by Arthur shows that balls hit with the same exit velocities and launch angles were much more likely to become home runs in 2016 than in 2015, suggesting that their air resistance might have decreased. But let's go back to Arthur's article and look at the baseballs themselves. These experiments are the same ones commissioned by ESPN Sports Science. This is what the layers of the baseball look like. The cowhide shell, the yarn, and the cork and rubber core. These are the x-rays of the balls in separate groups by year. Instantly, you can see how the balls from 2016 to 2017 seem to be less dense in the yarn layer. There seems to be more pockets of space compared to older balls. The article points out something different, however. They notice a density difference in the core of the baseball. The cork itself has four layers as you can see here. The outermost layer of the core, the pink rubber, is about 40% less dense in the newer balls. These less dense cores could be producing lighter baseballs. 
Also, these new baseballs have been theorized to be less air resistant, meaning they carry further. As stated before, these less dense cores are not enough to explain the staggering increase in home run totals, but when you couple the findings in both articles, these little changes in the ball may have been enough to start this new home run revolution. The combination of all these factors, a lighter, more compact baseball with tighter seams and more bounce, the ball could fly as much as 8.6 feet further, turning long fly balls on the warning track into home runs. Now we know how much the baseball has changed, let's look at some player statistics from someone not named Justin Verlander. I personally want to look at batters and how much their home run numbers have increased through the years. Let's look at the top 10 home runs for this season, as of July 13, 2019. Well, it's really top 12 because of the tied batters at the bottom. However, I'm going to be assessing only a few of these batters. It's hard to assess players who have only been in the league for a handful of seasons and or have presumably not hit their prime yet, like Cody Bellinger and Josh Bell. So we'll be looking at six players, Trout, Yelich, Encarnacion, Soler, Ustakas, and Bruce. A commonality with all of these players is that they are all on pace to have home run totals that are on par or will exceed their career best. StatCast has only been around since 2015, so for someone like Encarnacion, we don't know if he has had better numbers earlier in his career. But looking at these six players, they are all experiencing career highs or near career highs in exit velocity, launch angle, home runs per plate appearance, and hard hit percentage. All of these numbers tell the story as to why home run numbers have been increasing for all of these six players. Sure, it is only July, so some of these stat cast numbers may drop by the end of the season, but these numbers are still remarkable. If the balls were juiced like Justin Verlander said, then home runs would be hit every inning. What this shows is that the players are aware that the ball has changed to their advantage, so they are able to approach their at-bats differently. Is this unfair to the pitchers? This is what the real argument is in my opinion. They are now using a ball that is more susceptible to carry further in the air, and because the scenes have presumably been lowered, this may cause pitchers to have to pitch differently or have to experience blister issues like Johnny Cueto. Jacob deGrom said in response to Verlander's comments, I'm not going to disagree with him. I think that's what they thought fans would wanted to see. So if that was the case, I guess it's not bad for the game. But as a pitcher, I don't think any of us like giving up home runs. This seems to be more of an issue of transparency for pitchers rather than M be trying to overproduce runs. In 2015, Charlie Morton said, if the ball's different and intentionally different, I guess the one thing I would ask is just some transparency. If the league is trying to do something different and get a different result with balls in play, I think for history's sake and for the integrity of the game that there would be transparency. All-star hitter JD Martinez believes what the data shown in this video seems to suggest. As the velocity of pitchers increase, the control of these pitches decreased. JD says, it's either a walk or a strikeout, stuff over command. I think you see a lot more mistakes over the plate. The velocity, the guys trying to hit the ball in the air, I think it's a recipe for home runs. For a guy like Justin Verlander, who is now 36 but still throws up in the high 90s, control can become an issue. So even though he still is getting lots of strikeouts, he may be throwing more mistake pitches than ever before, because his velocity is a big key to his success. So, with all this information that has been put forward, what do we do with it? Well, the 538 article summed up my thoughts perfectly. According to Nathan's calculations, this would lead to a more than 25% increase in the number of home runs. This is in reference to prior calculations displaying that these new balls can add as much as 8.6 feet to the distance. In actuality, home runs spiked by about 46% between 2014 and 2017, which means that the changes to the ball could account for more than half of the increase. The remainder could be reasonably chalked up to a philosophical shift among MLB players, who are likely swinging upward to maximize the number of balls they hit in the air, and are not shy about the increase in strikeouts that may come with that approach. So, are the baseballs juiced? Not necessarily. The balls are not shown to be filled up with some chemical that allows players to hit home runs with ease. What we do know is that the changes to the balls have allowed players to approach hitting in new ways that allows them to hit the balls higher, harder, and further. Were these changes to the ball deliberate? Is Rob Manfred and his quest for higher ratings through pace of play to blame? I'm not sure if I can definitively determine that, but we can see how much the new ball has affected how players are playing the game. It's really up to the fans on whether they favor increased offensive production, despite the detriment it may have to quality pitching and even to the sport of baseball as a whole. Thanks for watching.